time for you to sleep. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Shadso Sarvan here, and it's time for another commentary. For this video, I'm going to be doing a commentary on a commentary. The person who I'm going to be commentating on is the William0737 and his commentary on Irate Gamers review of Ghosts and Goblins. Yeah, as if we haven't seen enough commentaries on that particular review. Now, before any of you jump to any conclusions, I am not doing this to defend Chris Bors. My feelings about him have remained unchanged, and I'm still not a fan. But just because you're commentating on a bad video doesn't mean the commentary will be good, as William very much proves here. So, let's get on with the video. Hey everybody, it's William0737, back again with another commentary on the Irate Gamer. This is going to be his Ghost and Goblins review. Well, let's begin. When you think of one of the most hardest games for the NES... What? When you think of one of the most hardest games for the NES... Don't you mean one of the hardest games? A little advice, proofread your script. Or at least do some rehearsal. Balls can't even spell principle correctly. I think asking him to proofread a script is giving him a bit too much credit. I guarantee that Ghosts and Goblins is probably on your top five list. If not, then it's time to make some room, because we're busting this game wide open. Wait, King Kong is your avatar? Unless my eyes were deceiving me, I could have sworn it was different. Oh boy, he is so stupid. I guess there are dumber, dumber people out there on YouTube. None come to mind, though. Yes, it was now, so necessary to game, cut away from the video to compare Boars to stupid idiots on YouTube, but without any comparisons. Of guy and girl fall in love. Guy and girl go out for a picnic. Girl then gets kidnapped by the devil? And takes her back down to hell with him? Whew. This is some heavy shit. That sounds like a pretty simple story to me. He wasn't referring to the complexity of the story, he was merely stating that having a girl being kidnapped by the devil and taken to hell is quite a big and serious situation for the game. I see that you share the same problems with people like Ratchet Clank 53 and Savior Rose Dragon PS3 who just take things out of context. Well, as long as he's on his way down to hell, can he at least take the movie Wicker Man, starring Nicolas Cage, along down with him? That movie was the biggest piece of shit I ever saw. Uh, Irate Gamer, just out of curiosity, what does that have to do with the game? It doesn't. Chris Bors was just making a joke. It was a shitty joke, granted, but its main intent was just for humour. And to be fair to Bors, Wicker Man did look a right shitty movie. Now once the game begins, you take control of the main character which is named Arthur. Your main goal is to go around and slash your way through six stages of Ghosts and Goblins in order to save your girlfriend. But here's the downside, and this one's a doozy. Get hit twice, and you become maggot food. SHIT! Oh yay, another classic game that he can make fun of. That he can bash. This ought to be interesting. Well, just because a game is considered a classic doesn't mean it's always flawless. I mean, take Metal Gear on the NES. That game is considered a classic by many, but when AVGM reviewed it, he pointed out the many critical design mistakes that ruined the overall fun of the game. Just wanted to throw that out there. Now, avoiding to get hit twice shouldn't be too much of a problem, but it is. The levels are huge, they're hard, and they're filled to the brim with a fuckload of enemies. Oh boy, the game doesn't get that hard until a little later on. The first level isn't that hard. True, but I could still never define the first level as easy. I mean, look at this shit! You aren't even given enough room to breathe! Tell me something, Ira Gamer, is the word challenge mean anything to you? Oh, so Chris hates challenge, does he? Jeez, I never knew that. No, I only heard it from the other 60 million people who already did commentaries on him in the past. Now, the first time you get hit, your armor will fall apart, leaving you to defend yourself in your tidy whities Ha ha ha, that is so not funny. Those aren't white, you know. That underwear that Arthur's wearing, or whatever the heck it is, looks more like a brownish color to me. You know what tidy whities are? Okay, here's something I just want to point out now, is the constant pauses he makes when he's recording. 
It's like he has to take a breath before starting a new sentence. I mean, it doesn't take that much effort to just edit it down. Then the commentary would flow much better. Your only chance now is to hope that these demons will take one look at you and double over from laughter. Why would they do that? Come on, a guy throwing javelins at zombies whilst only wearing a pair of brown underpants? That is kind of humorous. I actually think the enemies are more ridiculous than you are. Shouldn't you be laughing at them? Yes, the Aragir commentary said that already. <laughs> Hope he doesn't attack me. <laughs> Sorry, but was that supposed to be funny? Because, if I can be honest for a moment, I didn't exactly laugh. But I assure you this game is no laughing matter. <laughs> he looks so funny when he's trying to look angry. <laughs> Oh no, the other gamer is constipated. <laughs> Trust me, you ain't seen constipated until you've seen his Silver Surfer review. Did you happen to see that? Oh wait, you wouldn't have seen it, you're still stuck in 2007. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The other gamer just blew his brains out. He should have done that from the start. But my main beef is his fucking suit of armor. Armor made out of metal should be durable enough for any battle. And for one hit by a demon to totally destroy it is complete utter bullshit. Oh boy. Face palm applied directly to forehead. Congratulations! You learned how a face palm works. Now, if the rest of this commentary goes accordingly, could I please get your clarification on how a head disc works? Cause I think I'd be needing that. Now each time you start a new life, the screen will side scroll past every level that lies ahead. As if to mock you. <laughs> Face it, Arthur. You'll never get this far. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who didn't know, this unfunny devil guy is in this episode. Matter of fact, this is the first time I'm, I remember seeing him. Oh boy. As unfunny as always. Along your journey... Uh, hold a second, isn't that the arcade version? We're gonna encounter a lot of enemies, each one more powerful than the next. So, count on cheating if you intend on seeing anything past level 1. No comment there. I had no because comment. Nothing, That's why I needed to cut away from the video. Help you against the two hits in your dead bullshit. Oh my god. Alright gamer, this is the biggest pet peeve I have with your reviews. You don't give any valid points. You don't explain why the game sucks. If you're gonna say a game sucks, give some valid points, okay? Something he neglected to mention is the game does give you help. In some levels, if you lose your armor, you can find more armor to give you a hit back. Wait, I thought you were supposed to be the one defending this classic game. That means no magic mushrooms, no red hearts, not even a fucking power pellet. Oh, B-O-O-H-O-O. -O -O -O. Well done, you can S-P-E-L-L. -L. And guess what? You're a D-U-M-B-A-S-S. -S. I know, I got that joke from Realm Wars. Please don't sue! But what they will give you is a lame-ass fireball weapon. This piece of shit is awkward to use, and it'll hit your target one-fourth of the time. I said it before, and I'll say it again. This is not reviewing. This is nitpicking. Okay, how is Irate Gamer nitpicking exactly? He's making a complaint about a weapon which is supposedly a power-up that keeps missing whatever you need to hit. As much as I hate to admit it, he's actually making a legitimate complaint about the game. But of course, you hate the Irate Gamer, so you're just too blind to see the few good points he has. This guy is unfucking believable Ah, uh, Christopher Walken, at times like these, I've missed you. If you see it, just avoid it. And another thing I don't understand is that sometimes enemies will drop little bear statues that give you points. Points? Is that really necessary? For God's sake, I've got to worry about zombies, bats, demons, warlocks that'll turn you into a frog, demon knights, plants, dragons, ogres, ghosts, goblins, rancors, skeletons, and they want me to worry about some fucking point system too. You know, you're not going to get too far in the game. Okay, what's well, these constant around. avatar changes? Yeah, Can't well, decide which avatar you like the best? Use Why not use them all in one video? Who? How the hell is that going to matter once you save the princess? It won't! So fuck the point system! 
I'm really wondering what kind of age group this game was intended for, because if I can't get this far, how is a young kid going to do any better? Not everyone sucks at games, you realize that, don't you? Also, keep in mind that not everyone can beat Ghosts and Goblins. I mean, this game does have an infamous legacy for its difficulty. Well, that's why I invited my little cousin Joey over to see what he thinks of this game. Oh no, here it comes. Another one of his worst jokes ever made. You have been warned, this is awful. How you doing, Joey? I like games! I like games! Ghosting goblins, ghosting goblins. Okay. I like this game. This game sucks. Well, thanks, Joey. Wow, Cousin Joey couldn't get past the first screen on Ghost and Goblins. He has got to be the officially the worst gamer I've ever seen in my life. You see what I mean, folks? One of his wor one of his horrible jokes. I guess you can add that to one of the top 10 or top 100 worst jokes ever made. <laughs> That's not saying much coming from you. I mean, his jokes may be bad, but as far as entertainment value goes, you ain't exactly Tim Vine yourself. Now, once you pass level 1, you find that each stage is harder than the next. That's what I just said a little while ago. If you can believe that. And one annoying thing is these annoying floating eyeball platforms. Each one moves at a different speed, which makes moving from one to the next very difficult. Okay, Irate Gamer, one small question. Why do you keep showing footage from the arcade version of this game? I thought you were reviewing the NES version. Oh, come on. It should be blatantly obvious by now. No? Well, here's a little hint. He has maxed out lives, and he doesn't lose his armor when he gets hit. And if you don't jump in time, you'll be knocked off your platform completely. Damn it! So, if you're lucky enough to survive the onslaught of enemies, you'll find yourself at the end of stage 5 to fight off two giant bats. Now, once you defeat them, it's on to the last battle, right? Well, you better have been lucky enough to find this special shield, or you ain't going nowhere. In fact, you're going right back to the beginning of level 4. Oh, B-O-O-H-O-O. -O -O. Did somebody hit the R-E-W-I-N-D button on the V-I-D-E-O? Yes, you heard me correctly. Back to the beginning of stage fucking four. Now, once you find the shield and make it back, then it's on to the final battle. And this is it. The war between good and evil ensues. It's a trap! A battle of wills, a battle of wits, and a battle of... This room is an illusion. A trap devised by Satan? And now they sent me back to level one to beat this game a second time? Oh boy, some more nitpicking. Again, how is he nitpicking? He actually has a valid complaint. Making you beat the game twice is just a cheap way to double the length of the game. I mean, you throw around the nitpicking excuse so much that you start to lose the distinction between nitpicking and actual legit arguments. You know, I think this is a good time to end this video. You know what? I think I'll follow suit. So now to give my thoughts, starting with Irate Gamer. Well, nothing much really needs to be said on this review, as it's already been said like a million times before, so I'll just keep it brief. His review was poor, he had shit jokes, and his reliance on cheating just gave cement proof that he is not a competent gamer. If you want a more professional and detailed look at Ghosts and Goblins, I say stick with the Angry Video Game Nerds review. But now for William. Good lord, this commentary was horrible. So let's just list the problems he had. Most of his commentary just consists of Irate Gamer sucks, he hates challenge, stop nitpicking, and all that just thrown around. And he was also very boring to watch, as he just had a bland voice and low entertainment value. Also, I don't really understand why he kept changing his avatar, it just seemed pointless to me. The big problem though is that this commentary just had no purpose. The review he commentated on is 5 years old, and it's already been commentated on by everyone. If you haven't got anything new to say about someone, then don't bother making an unoriginal video on it, because it won't hold anyone's interest. 
Look, I have no problem if you hate the R8 Gamer, but if you want to commentate on his videos, try and be more topical. Go for a recent video like his Silver Surfer review. Don't go for one that's pretty much dead and buried. And this to me seems to be a continuous problem with his other videos that he's commentated on. Super G Gangster, very invalid, not only dead topics, but obvious trolls as well. If you ask me, this guy is on a slippery slope to becoming Foxtrot Delta Lima 497. In fact, no, he's on a slippery slope whilst wearing fluffy slippers with a pond of thin ice just waiting for him at the bottom. That's all I'm going to say about him. So this is Shadso Sullivan saying goodbye, take care, and if you excuse me, I'm off to see Muse tonight. Can't be associated with that travesty. I mean, I've got standards for fuck's sake.